Hey everybody, Peach here and welcome to episode number nine of the Omega Arms series. Now, today we're gonna to be building a preacher curl bench out of the foot plate that I taught you how to build back in episode three. All right, now the Omega Arms foot plate is extremely versatile. In fact, it's appeared in the following videos to date. Episode three is the leg press foot plate. Episode four is the pendulum squat foot plate. Episode five is the inverted leg press foot plate. Episode six, as the resistance band platform, AKA the band box. And most recently, episode eight as a utility seat for executing leg extensions and leg curls. Well, today we got another use for the Omega Arms foot plate, a rack mounted preacher curl bench to be used for standing or seated preacher curls. Now I've already published a preacher curl attachment video before where we made this guy. And this attaches both to your bench or your DIY parallel bars, which is another video. However, in today's video, I'm offering a different version, one that is rack mountable and which has built in hooks for racking your barbell. All right, now let me show you how to set it up. Okay, so to set it up, we're gonna need a 36 inch long half inch nipple with a T connector, a nipple cap or a floor flange on the end. Then we simply gonna run this through the unit's top hole and through the rack. And that's it. Ready to exercise. Put on my pad and let's go. All right, now it's time for the best part of the video, the step-by-step -step DIY tutorial. Step number one, attach the foot plate to your rack. All right, step number two, now we're gonna set the foot plate to our desired pitch. Now, commercially purchased preacher curl benches range in pitch from 55 degrees down to 45 degrees. So as long as you're in that range, you should be good to go. Now, I'm personally gonna go with a 45 degree pitch. Now, to measure the pitch, you can go with something cool and sexy and digital, like a, a digital level, or you can go with something a little bit more analog, something like this guy. Either one will work, and I'll put links down in the description below for these products. Okay, so. What we're gonna do is, I'm gonna prop this up using my adjustable bench, okay? So, what we're looking for is a 45 degree pitch, and with that, I have 51 degrees, so we're gonna keep going. So I'm just gonna wedge things underneath here. Okay. And right there, I got 45.3, which is very close, so, that's exactly what we're gonna go with. All right, step number three. Now I'm gonna take this 14 inch piece of four x four and I'm gonna measure and mark the center line. All right, step number four. Okay, we are gonna take this four x four and we are gonna clamp it onto our rack such that this line that we just drew perfectly bisects the first hole of our Omega Arms foot plate, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it right here and the trick will be do not disturb the pitch of the foot plate and make sure that the pitch of this four by four is zero degrees, okay? So I'm gonna loosely clamp it on now, okay? And then we're gonna have to go around back and we'll make adjustments such that that line perfectly bisects that hole. Okay, it's perfect, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pencil and I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna trace that hole position onto the four by four. All right, good to go. Step number five, so before I remove the four by four and take it over to the drill press, I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna trace the pitch of the foot plate onto the four by four, okay? Now this will tell me where I'll ultimately be able to cut later. More on that later in the video. Okay, it is time to drill and we're gonna be drilling using a one and one quarter inch spade bit. Now this is the circle that I traced earlier Okay, and I've already drawn the boundaries of that circle with a speed square. Okay, and I'm gonna take this spade bit and I'm gonna line the edges of it up on those boundaries. 
Okay, I'm going to slide this up to right where the point of that spade bit touches that center line. Okay, this center line right here. So, where all that matches up is right here. Okay, so I'm going to just press in a little bit with my spade bit. Okay, and that little dent now is exactly where I'm going to place the tip of this spade bit and we're going to drill. Okay, so this thing did not go all the way through, okay? It's actually a very dull bit, so I'm gonna remedy it by using a one and one quarter inch Forstner bit. Now, why didn't I use this to begin with? Because the bit's not long enough to go all the way through, and, sorry. All right, here goes nothing. Looking good, looking good. All right, next step. Now we're gonna be making a 45 degree angle cut. So just for reference, this is where we traced the slope of the foot plate earlier, and we're gonna be cutting 11 inches from the end, okay? So right here, we're gonna be chopping this off. Now, if you deviate from this and you make it any shorter or any longer, you might run into some problems. So go to DIYFitnessClub.com for more details on that. All right, let's cut. Looking good. All right, next step. Now you're gonna take this guy and you're gonna use it as a template to making a second identical copy. All right, next step. Now that we have two identical units, it's time to attach them to the rack. So to do so, we're gonna be using a three quarter inch nipple with cap that's 36 inches long. All right, next step. And now I'm gonna take a piece of four by four, and this happens to be just a little over four and a half inches long, and I'm gonna measure and mark the center line like this, okay? Now I'm gonna take that block and I'm gonna place it right here so that this center line bisects the foot plate center hole, which is right here, okay? So we're gonna line that up and then I'm gonna go around back with a flashlight and I'm gonna trace the hole position just like we did before. All right, now we're gonna take this down to the drill press and we're gonna use a one and one quarter inch spade bit just like we did before. All right, next step, we're drilling with a one and one quarter inch spade bit. Boom, all right, all done. Now we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna make a second identical block. All right, next step. Now that we have our two identical units and we have our two identical blocks, it's time for a little light sanding. So throw in your PPE and let's sand. All right, next step. Now we're gonna glue the blocks into place. So to do so, go ahead and apply some wood glue to the bottom side of the block and then line up the holes. And the other side. All right, and now we're gonna run another 36 inch long, three quarter inch nipple with cap through the blocks holes. Okay, and now make any fine tune adjustments as required making sure the edges are flush. All right, now add clamps and we'll let it dry. All right, next step, the glue is now dry, so now it's time to paint.
All right, the paint is now dry and it's looking great. So now we're gonna take some of these framing angles and I'm just gonna put it on the front and the back of the block just to reinforce it a bit. All right, next step. Now we're gonna be attaching our hooks. So I'm gonna be placing my hooks basically right in the center of this 45 degree angle cut, okay? Now for you, there are some additional considerations you might wanna think about before selecting the placement. So go to DIYFitnessClub.com for more details on that. Now, through the top hole, the top large hole, I'm gonna be using a two inch lag screw, okay? And on the bottom, I'm going to be using a one and one quarter inch construction screw. Okay. The reason being, if I use another one of these guys in the bottom, it would poke out the bottom. So that's why I'm doing that. Now I've already pre-drilled to prevent the wood from splitting with my brand new DeWalt drill. It's the DCD 791. Highly recommend a link down in the description. So for that, construction screw I'll be using this guy now for this lag screw I'm going to be using my brand new DeWalt impact driver the DCF887 link down in the description both awesome all right let's attach these guys awesome all right All right, last step. Okay, now we're gonna talk about pads. So this pad is from Pure Fitness, not exactly a household name, but it's a pretty decent pad. It's actually a replacement part for one of their cheapo uh, preacher curl benches, okay? And it's 23 inches across, and it's dense but comfortable, okay? Now, the beauty of getting something like this is that rounded edge is gonna allow it to basically just sit on this thing and it won't fall off and then you just go put it somewhere, okay? Now, if you're interested in stretching your pad dollar a bit more, and you're looking for a little bit more versatility, I would get a balance pad. Link down in the description below. Now this is also very dense. The only drawback here is there's no rounded edge, okay? Now, the anti-slip tape will keep this on to some extent, but you're probably gonna want to just take like an adjustable strap. This is an adjustable luggage strap. I'll put a link down in the description for one of these guys too. And just strap the thing on, okay? So do that, tighten it, and we're good to go. Now, let's exercise. Whew. All right, now one substitution to consider is instead of using the 36 inch long, three quarter inch nipple with cap right here in front, is to use three quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC. The reason, well, if I'm slouched down a bit on here, I have encountered some interference with using 25 pound Olympic plates with the placement of this cap and the nipple on this side. So the solution is to have a shorter pipe running through those layers and well using pvc is just much easier to cut and drill and it's cheaper so i already cut this length of pvc and i drilled holes in the ends the holes are so that we can put some pins in there to keep them locked into place so let me show you how to set it up so i'm going to remove this three quarter inch nipple and we're gonna swap it out with this piece of Schedule 40 3 quarter inch PVC.
Okay, and now in those holes, we can run uh, Allen wrenches. You can just put nails in there, whatever. So I'm just gonna put some nails in there. And now we're not gonna have any interference. All right, that was the DIY rack mounted preacher curl attachment. A very quick setup and very effective. A great addition to any home gym. Now if you need any supplies to make this project or any other project, such as pads, tools, hooks, etc., please consider using my affiliate links down in the description below. It costs you nothing extra and it helps support the channel. Alright, that does it for this episode and I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode of the Omega Arm series. So, be sure to subscribe to the channel to be alerted the moment the next episode drops.